So something a little different for you today. I have a personal story from my past that I wanted to share with you today, which I feel has a compelling punchline for those of you that want to improve your endurance engine on your road bike. So let's get into it. So today I'm taking you back to 1997. The same year the Nintendo 64 was taking over the world, the Titanic blew the box office and the year my beloved Adelaide Crows won the Aussie Rules Premiership. Now it was 1997 where I found myself in grade 10, 15 turning 16 and I was all of a sudden in the Senior Rowing Boat Club, which was comprised of year levels 10, 11, and 12. Year 12 is where you graduate in Australia, and with six crews of rowing eights and a cox, as shown in this example. Now, this particular year at Brighton Grammar School in Melbourne, Victoria, where I was fortunate enough to attend for a number of years, we had probably the strongest senior boat club we'd ever had in our history since 1882. I believe it was. So there was high expectations, not only on the first eight, but also the eights that sat below the first eight. For me, being an early developer at the time, I ended up rowing in the second eight that year, and we turned out to be the favorites for the head of the river too. But it's not the first eight, nor the second eight that I wanted to talk to you about in this video. It's the third eight, notably the third eight rowing coach from Germany named Stefan who had previously been coaching and working with national junior rowing teams in Germany and was just looking for some part-time work in Australia as he was here in 1997 on a personal trip. Now, schoolboy rowing is very serious. We'd train on the river four evenings per week and in addition, we'd be in the gym three mornings per week and let's not forget a couple of grueling rowing camps chucked into the mix. But ultimately, seven training sessions per week and on the weekends, we'd either be racing or training, typically both Saturday and Sunday. It was unrelenting and the season was long. We'd work our way from the back end of a year all the way through to the following year where we'd be targeting the head of the river on Barwon Heads in Geelong, a 1500 meter race or basically an all out five minute effort, which would basically crown the title as head of the river winners. But back in 1997, my friends, we got flogged in training. The vast majority of sessions were hard from the very start of the season, which was probably a five month season, to the very end, and fatigue was a real factor. In fact, in 1998, I believe through rowing, I ended up with glandular fever, but that's a story for another day. So in 1997, the first and the second eight started the season flying. We were undefeated, smashing crews left, right, and center, but the third eight, which had very high expectations, of course, because of the first and second, were mediocre. They were middle of the pack. They never even looked like winning a race. and. The training they were doing, guided by Stefan, was a lot different to what the other crews were doing. This crew in the initial parts of the season was extremely focused on technique and pretty much all the training was long and strong, we used to call it, or an easy-ish endurance pace. Now, as this was going on, my coach and the first eight coach, who weren't teachers at the school, this was a paid gig to be a rowing coach back in the day, and I'm sure it is even more so now, they were external to the school, so they didn't mind bringing out their own personalities, and they started to bag this coach and his techniques in front of us, and he soon became a bit of a laughing stock behind the scenes, and as the first and the second eight continue to dominate, the thirds, who were still training this same way, long and strong, continued to be middle of the pack. So there was this momentum growing behind the scenes, so much so that I started to feel that even the third eight rowing crew who were picking up on this sentiment, pouring through the rowing club, they were starting to turn against their coach as well. But then something happened. Roughly two, maybe three months leading into the head of the river, late March, Stefan started to incorporate some high intensity interval training into the third crew's training. There was still a lot of long and strong work, more so than any other crew, but the fact Stefan had started to incorporate this high intensity training, people were starting to speculate. He's probably just finally cotton on to what training is supposed to be and he's listening to the other coaches, but no, 
That certainly wasn't the case. Stefan had this strategy all along. And towards the head of the river, all of a sudden, the third eight started to place, win, and they looked like they were starting to become the number one crew in that third division. Then it was head of the river on Barwon Heads, Geelong, Victoria, late March, 1997, schools lining the riverbanks to cheer on their crews. The first, seconds, and thirds had all made their way to the final. The scene was set for all crews to take out the win. However, the first eight leading in to the final part of the season, who had been getting flogged all year, they started to lose some races. It looked like their form was declining and they only just won their semi-final. The second eight, the crew that I was in, we also started to lose some races towards the end of the season and felt a little bit shaky. And then the third eight, not only had they started to win their races towards the end of the season, they actually broke the course record for the third eight division in the semi-final. And then as follows, as the crews ran through, the third eight came through and absolutely smashed it. I wish I could show you, it's on this old VHS. The third eight won by over two boat lengths and broke their course record that they broke only hours prior, again in the final. The second eight, the crew that I was in, which you can see from this old footage here, we just scraped in, thankfully, after running second the whole race until the final 500 meters. And the first, they got beaten and they were red hot favorites. In fact, they didn't even come second, they came third. And it was hugely disappointing for the boat club, especially when the thirds and seconds came in first. It put a real dampener on the evening. But interestingly, Stefan, he went back to Germany the following year. 1998, and guess what? All the rowing coaches were trying to figure out what was this coach doing? What was his strategy? And it was. Stefan used the initial part of the season to focus on building base aerobic fitness, long and strong, in conjunction with a hyper focus on technique. Yes, the crew was getting beaten in the initial parts of the season, but no one remembers those races. We only remember the head of the river. So who really cares? Then, Leading into the head of the river, roughly 10 to 12 weeks out, Stefan started to incorporate some high intensity training, notably high intensity interval training. Specific sessions would be focused on speed, VO2 max and threshold work, and other sessions would still be focused on long and strong to maintain that aerobic engine that had been established. In other words, Stefan was following a polarized style training model, the 80-20 rule, where 80% of your training is at a lower intensity, that aerobic base building intensity, and 20% of your training is at a higher intensity. And because you're training this way, you can tackle those higher intensity sessions in a much fresher state because you're not fatigued. Now, whether it was 100% 80-20, 70-30, I'm not exactly sure, but it was definitely along those lines. Additionally, Stefan leveraged the first part of the season to work on foundations, base aerobic fitness as the focus, rather than fatiguing his crew leading into the critical two to three month period before the head of the river. Meaning the crew weren't carrying fatigue from the early part of the season when you don't want to be fatigued into the critical part of the season, that final 10, 12 weeks, where you want to be getting the most out of your high intensity interval training sessions because if you can get the most out of those sessions, that's where the ultimate fitness adaptations occur. And as you now know with this story, that's why the crew ended up destroying everyone in that final race of the season. If you've gotten value out of this story or video today, if you could give it a like, that would be greatly appreciated. And if you're after more information on base training, polarized style model training, don't forget we've got a free ebook below. And if you're keen to get going on a training method like Stefan's style, we've got our next intake into the up-level road cycling course, 12 week program occurring on July 18th. We've also got one later in November. I'll provide a link below if you want to apply for that. I'll catch you in the next video.